Recently, I was working on a project where I was creating some grass, dirt, soil into this big old chunk. So I wanted to go over the process of how I created this procedural grass. So let's dive into Houdini. Let's drop down a grid. And just a caveat here, I'm going to make this one meter by one meter wide, change the rows and columns to about 100 so we get a little bit higher resolution. Just know that this approach is good for uh, small scale grass, but if you wanted to do a big field of grass, you're going to want to use hair and groom tools because they will be able to generate guide curves to then render with a lot more blades of grass at render time. Whereas this example, it's more of a brute force approach where we're going to scatter a bunch of points and each one of these points is going to have a blade of grass copied to it. So you can see that if we got up to a million, two million points, that gets pretty heavy if we were to apply that density to a bigger field because we're going to have maybe one, two million points just on this grid here that's only one meter by one meter. So just going to cancel that operation there real quick and uh, just, just keep that in mind. So we're going to drop down a mountain node here in order to give our grid a little bit more of a, an earthy feel. Okay, that looks good enough. And we're going to scatter some points. So I'm just going to start by scattering a thousand points so we can just kind of visualize what we're doing. Now, we're going to want to create blades of grass to copy to each of these. So I'm going to drop down a copy to points and I have my line stop. So I'm going to just plug these two in here and we see we have our basis of grass. Now, jumping back to this example, one thing that is interesting about this grass is that there's breakup, the grass goes in random directions, there's some color variation. All of these attributes are going to help us to create some grass that doesn't look like crappy CG grass like this. So what we can do is first start by working on the direction. So I'm going to drop down an attribute randomize and I'm going to do this for my normals. Okay. And what I'm going to do is draw down an inside sphere distribution and we want to bias it towards the up direction. So if I increase that we can see that these normals indeed are pointing towards the top but we see that these lines are actually going that way. The reason that is is because Houdini when it instances things on the points actually uses the the z direction as its a vector so what we're essentially doing is we are taking the z and using that as where the normal would be. So that's why when we plug these in, it's as if that z direction is pointing up and these lines are going that way. So what we should do is just change this direction to be in the z direction. And then we see that our points are all pointing up in random directions. Now, the next thing that we can do is drop down an attribute randomize again, but this time we're going to call this the p-scale. So the p-scale controls the scale of these uh, blades of grass or whatever's copied to the points. So I'm actually going to change the distribution to exponential right now, change this to one dimension, and uh, give, it some, give it some limits. So let's say the middle value is 0.5 and the minimum limit is 0.1, the max, let's say 50, who knows. And uh, we're going to decrease our global scale here. So now we see that the grass has different lengths, which is nice. Maybe uh, we'll increase our minimum limit so we don't have too many ones that offshoot, but, but that's looking nice already. Okay, if I was to increase my amount of uh, blades of grass, we already see that this is looking better. Now, one problem that I see is that the grass is just sticking straight up. So back here on our line, what we could do is we could just add a simple bend. And since this is already in the Z direction and this capture direction is in the Z direction, we can just... Oh, make sure our lines has like maybe six points. If I turn on my points here, we can see that now it will bend. Okay. And if we jump back here, we see that we have grass that's kind of bending over. The problem here, though, still is that this grass is bent and it's looking better, but it's all kind of going in the same direction. So again, let's drop down another attribute randomize and let's call this our up vector. Now, what we want here with our up vector. If I turn this on, I'm going to click the I and click the up so we can then visualize it here. Check that. We can see that our up vector is pointing in a bunch of different directions. So now if I go to my copy to points, we can see that that alters some of these directions. Okay, which 
works in order to, again, randomize these blades. Now, one thing that we can do to even make a better distribution is change this to inside sphere, and we're gonna bias it uh, towards a certain direction. And by doing that, let's check here. We can bias it towards a single direction, but these are still kind of randomized. So when we look at it here, we see that the grass is still kind of pointing in one flow, but it's, it's more offset as opposed to a more uniform direction. And again, if you wanted to spruce this up, you could alter your up direction however you'd like, but I think for now, we're just gonna leave that as is. One last thing on the P scale in order to uh, make some areas where it's even further, some patches that are you know, not as long. If we go back here, you know, there's some areas that are obsolete or not as long. So if I jump back here, I can drop down an attribute bop and I can add some anti-alias flow noise. Plug this in here to the color so we can visualize it. I'm gonna drop down a fit range here and go from negative 0.5 to 0.5. The reason I do this is because the flow noise generates values from negative 0.5 to 0.5, so we want to fit that to zero to one. And now I can increase the amplitude so we can see that a bit better. And let's increase the frequency just a bit. So if we fit this to maybe 0.1 to one, what we can do is drop down our P scale attribute here with a bind, and then we can drop down a multiply. We can plug this in here, plug that in here, and then export that attribute with a bind export. So we're basically telling our P scale to go in here, multiply by those values, and spit out a new P scale. And now we can see that our grass is going to be shorter in those areas. Now if I disconnect a the color there, we can see here that we've got areas where there's really short grass and longer grass. And if I up my scatter to maybe 100,000 now, we can see that we're getting a much better varied grass. So next what we could do is just drop down a simple color stop here, give this grass a little base color. And let's make it some dark green, something like that. And what we want to do is vary the color as well. I'm also going to look at this P scale and I'm going to change it slightly by making the lower bounds just a little bit higher. So maybe drop that to 0.3. So it does get lower, but not tremendously low. And uh, yeah, that looks good. And so now if I alt click, left click here, I'm going to copy this noise because we want to use it to vary the color. So I'm just going to actually export this as a bias parameter. Sorry, we've got to drop down a bind export. Okay, because the same color here, if we, if we look here, we're getting that pattern. So I'm going to just export this as a bias. All right, so this is our bias. And then what we can do is drop down a point wrangler, wrangle and we can then say the color is equal to a linear interpolation, so there's a function called lerp, from the current color to a new color, which I'll just define here as my color two, based on the bias. And so what that is going to do is it's going to linearly interpolate based on this bias, our green color to this other color. Now, we don't obviously want that just black, so I'm gonna make this uh, color it a little bit different. Maybe we want to make it a little bit more brown or I don't know change whatever color you want to vary it And then what you could do is you could essentially make more noises and repeat and continue to Vary up the color you can change up the the scaling and the way that the blades all Point and then you can even change up the density. So there you have it That's how I would go about creating some procedural grass in Houdini really fast if you had any other questions about this, please comment below. Uh, if you liked it, give it a like, maybe share it, do what uh, your heart desires. But uh, until next time, we'll see you later.